Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Saturday afternoon here in Australia, so obviously sort of Friday evening over in the States and we can see, boom, market takes a big dip straight away. So as I was saying, you know, has the weekend retracement sort of come? No, it seems like uh, we're still very much in the midst of it. But again, dropping uh, on the Friday to then, you know, maybe sort of level out. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Still holding above, above 1.5 trillion, and that really is, you know, kind of a key mark that I'm sort of looking for. If we go below 1.5 uh, trillion, and we are quite close, you know, we're only sort of, you know, 17 billion uh, away from that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, whether that creates even fear, further fear in the markets. But, you know, as I've said for a number of, you know, sort of weeks now, I'm not panicking, I'm not doing anything, I'm still buying. And again, look, if the market continues to go down, I'm just going to continue to buy. I fundamentally believe in cryptocurrencies. You know, I've done, you know, not full in-depth, you know, uh, research on every single coin that I've been in, but I've at least done some research coin, uh, some research on all the coins that I'm in. And, you know, the, the ones that I have larger positions in them, I fundamentally believe with, in them and think they're going to be, you know, around, you know, for years to come. Doesn't mean I'm 100% correct, but I'm confident in them. So for me, I don't worry about these short term, you know, kind of fluctuations too much. I'm thinking more, you know, five, six, seven, 10, 20 years down the track. All right, let's have a look. All right, Bitcoin got knocked around a bit. It is still at 43% dominance. Ether's now down under 17% dominance and gas prices around about 11%. So really, again, the seven days doesn't look so good. But in saying that, you can see that we're not really coming down low. We had a bit of a pump. So again, this was a fake out and now we're just really kind of coming back and retesting some old sort of uh, support and resistance levels. So again, I'm not too worried. Still at 35,000, that's above the 30,000, 31,000, you know, and 32,000 and that that we were trading at not that long ago, like literally only, you know, two weeks ago. Woof, Ethereum. Dipped under 2200, uh, so only just, but again, 7%, you know, over the last seven days. And that's why I've told uh, everyone, if you've watched my channel before, Bitcoin, it really is the safest bet. It is the least volatile out of basically all the cryptocurrencies outside of stable coins. And look, even some stable coins, depending on which one you're in, can still go to zero. So, you know, Bitcoin only down 5.9%, but other coins down by a whole lot more. But then other coins haven't done as bad. It's all dependent on the time. But overall, Bitcoin's, yeah, the most stable of all the uh, altcoins. Gets outperformed gains-wise, but outperforms in a good way uh, all, the other all the other coins in a bear market as well. Doesn't dump as bad. So anyway, yeah, 35,000, you know, Ethereum. Oh, there we go. Jump back up above uh, 2,200. So that's nice. It just doesn't look pretty, does it, ladies and gentlemen? It's pretty ugly. Again, this is why, you know, I personally don't recommend having too much in altcoins. You know, you make your own mind up. I don't offer you financial advice. And in saying that, I've got a lot of money in altcoins. But look, I've got, I think, oh God, it'll be 60, 70 plus percent of my total portfolio uh, is in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Then I've got some stable coins and then I'm into altcoins. I really went sort of altcoin crazy. But for me, I still believe we're in a bull market. I don't think we're out of it uh, yet. I think we have a lot to go. So I'm just going to hold my altcoins. Like I said, I fundamentally believe in pretty much all of them, really. I've done some research, not total in-depth research like i said into all of them but i like what they're all about you know i've got some positions in some nft spots that i really like i've got some positions in DeFi that i really like got some positions in layer ones and layer twos and all sorts of things like that so you know i'm across the board uh and yeah i'm happy with my position but all right has anything done well because i mean down 6.7 percent that that's a pretty big loss in 24 hours uh, considering how far we've already come down. So let's see, is there anything that, you know, might give a glimmer of hope for, you know, some people out there? 2.9% for Quant. All right, congratulations, Quant, that is it. You're the only coin outside of some stable coins that has done any well. Everything else has been hammered. And Quant is still up 42% uh, over the last seven days. So very, very nice. 
Let's have a look at the seven day chart. Quant, all right, there we go. Uh, XDC network, AMP. So there are a few coins that are kind of hanging in there and have done all right over the last seven days. But look what's happening here. Again, the market's now dipped, so even they're starting to come down. These would have been a lot more prior to uh, all of these, I'm pretty much sure. All right, so not really any gains whatsoever and some you know reasonable size losses again nothing sort of too crazy we're not seeing 30 40 percent sort of losses here so you know hopefully the worst of it's over but it is it's a tough time in the market at the moment ladies and gentlemen and again i i, I don't ever i'm not ever going to offer you financial advice i'm just going to tell you what i'm doing and it's going to be based on this just simply go to the Bitcoin chart. That's what I do. Here's the upward trend that we've been in for so long. Have we dipped all the way out of it? No, no. We basically sort of wicked out of it. Have we set in a lower low than we've been to before? No, we've basically come and retested. We've retested this, retested this, and retested some of this. And that's as far as it's gone at the moment. Not to say it can't go lower, but is it going to come down below 33,000? Is it then going to come down below 32,000? Is it then going to come down below sort of 31,000? And then is it going to go below, you know, basically 30,000? That's really what I'm waiting for. And even if we do come down and sort of touch these, but then we get that quick, so not so much quick recovery, but a recovery over Monday, Tuesday, Friday. In the end, where are we? Here we go. This is the range that we've been traveling in. Now just move this out a little bit because what you're gonna see is some interesting sort of things here. Look where a lot of these wicks are kind of touching. Oh, sorry, that wasn't supposed to do that. Broke out above it, come back down, still playing in the same area we've been a really for a really long time. We've wicked below this a few times. There's been some, you know, outliers. We haven't been able to break back above where we were, but we're still trading in this range. So again, for me, I'm not too concerned. Like if we scale out, now I'm not saying this is going to happen. But how could I be bearish if we just continue to trade within this range? We might have some fake outs to the low side. We may have, may have some fake outs to the high side. As long as we still sort of stay anywhere within this kind of range, roughly, it doesn't have to be exact, why would I be bearish? What am I going to be too worried about? And again, so for me, that's all it is. This is not what the peak of a market looks like. This is not, you know... Everyone got completely and utterly euphoric and everyone was piling in and, you know, just throwing tons of money at complete random utter crap. Don't get me wrong, some of that was done. You know, there were meme coins that were blowing up and all the rest of it, but it was nowhere near what it's like uh, being like in other, other peaks. And that's because the institutional money is here. And so they are now trying to play this market as best they can because they understand what's coming. They see that this is the new financial future. They are going to get in and get a position where they can now basically start to control it. And that's all that's happening now. All this, you know, the new money, i.e. slash the dumb money, they're just getting shaken out. And I'm not saying that we can't go lower and maybe we come back down and, you know, test this level again, 20,000. Totally possible. I'll tell you how much of my Bitcoin I'm selling. Zero. Absolutely none. Nutter. I will look to start selling some and it'll be a very small fraction of it at a hundred plus thousand dollars or maybe just a little bit under you know in the sort of 90s the nervous 90s as we say in Australia when it comes to cricket and that because that's where people will get nervous and probably start to take some profits thereabouts but until we get to there and I don't care if it takes another four or five years I'm still buying all I'm looking at is that it is currently thirty five thousand dollars thereabouts to buy Bitcoin it has previously been at, you know, we can basically round it up to $65,000. I'm almost doubling my money. 
what other market can you go to that you're going to double your money? There's not too many places you can do it. I'm not saying it can't be done in stocks and things like that, but you've got to get real lucky and you know know when to buy at the right time and still somewhat the same in cryptocurrencies. But I know that it's generally, and again, the markets are changing. The cycles are changing because the big money's here. But I'll tell you how to beat the big money. Don't sell. Buy and simply hold. You can get credit for having Bitcoin. It doesn't really matter what price you've bought it at. Go and put it on something like, you know, BlockFi, Celsius, Crypto.com, you name it, you know. You can earn a passive income from that. Now, again, I'm not telling you to do that. I have a referral link down to BlockFi. I like them. I like what they do. But I don't have all my Bitcoin on there. And I'd never be sort of, and I wouldn't say silly enough, but I'd never put all of my anything into any one thing. Spread it out over a few different places. You know, and again, if you're not into Bitcoin, you know, Ethereum, whatever coin you want, there's ways to make an income. But the way these big players get you is they buy it off you. They push the price down low. They've already got positions in it and they're, you know, scaling in as they're pushing the price down as well so they can get more and they're shaking out the new scared money. So whatever coin you're into, as long as you've done, you know, at least some research, you fundamentally believe in it and think it's got, you know, long-term value, why would you sell at the moment considering every coin you're probably getting into right now has been anywhere from two to maybe three or four times higher than the prices you're currently buying them at now. If you think you're only going to buy at the bottom and all you're ever going to see is upside, you won't make it in any market. You won't make it in the stock market, you won't make it in the crypto market, you won't make it in any market. All markets are volatile. And the one thing that the smart money does is they generally just buy and hold. They really don't sell that much. I'm not saying they don't sell any, they do, but they don't have to sell a whole lot because they own so much. They only have to sell a little bit and it pushes the market all over, all over the place, whereas me and you couldn't. But you know, if you had hundreds of millions of dollars, you could go and buy a hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin and start to sell off $30 million of it really, really quick on the spot market short the crap out of it and then also have the cash from the Bitcoin that you're selling that's going down and buy back in uh, when it finally hits that bottom price when you stop selling because you can create a cascade effect and everyone else panics and does the same and that is exactly what these big players do and until you understand that you're probably just going to get wrecked I bought Bitcoin at oh god 40 sorry uh, 40 something thousand I literally bought some at 40 thousand it's down, you know, $5,000 from there, not selling. Guess what happens if Bitcoin gets down to 30000 Not selling. Guess what happens if Bitcoin gets down to 25000 Not selling. There's no downward price, really, that you can get me to sell my Bitcoin at. Because, I mean, let's face it, if it basically gets down to $5, what's the point in selling it for $5? I've basically, you know, kind of lost all that money right there and then. I fundamentally believe uh, in you know what crypto is about, the revolution of the new era of finance and things like that, so I don't get shaken out in these things. But once something goes into price discovery, you need to be very, very careful. Don't chase pumps. You need to try and preempt them. Come and understand some charts. There's plenty of stuff on YouTube that can help you, show you you know uh, how these charts work, and you know where is generally what would be considered a fair price to buy in, where would be a really good price to buy in, and where would be a really bad price to buy in. Again, so I put this line in here, and this is the upwards trajectory of Bitcoin just since this run. And you know, this this gets broken all the time, and it got broken to the top, so technically you could, could have said it stopped there, and now it's been broken to the bottom, you technically could say it's been stopped there. But we just gotta wait and see where this plays out. If this just travels sideways, then I start to shorten this up and it doesn't matter, and I have to put a new one in. But this is where it's been traveling for a really long time. Generally, anything above this line is not the greatest price to buy it. It doesn't mean it's a bad price. It just means it might not be the best price. Generally, anything underneath this line, so down here, is a good buying opportunity. So possibly consider taking profits. Not saying you should, but definitely once you get to the top, that's probably a good time to start taking some profits. But the thing is, sometimes it doesn't pay out. Again, you take profits here at 42000 
it continued all the way to 62,000. Now you're lucky it has pulled back and you can buy some more, but you've got to just kind of have a look at these kind of chart patterns and things like that and just work it out for yourself because you can't just simply take my word and my chart pattern or anyone else's, but there's so much good information out there that if you start to collect the information from different various sites, you can start to make much more educated uh, you know, decisions on sort of how things will work. But again, you still need to do some of the research. Don't simply trust me. Don't simply trust anybody. All right, so again, finishing up on this, as long as we're basically traveling somewhere around about here, we can be a little bit above, we can even be a little bit below. I'm not overly worried. I wasn't buying any Bitcoin up here. I did buy some at 40,000, so i.e. about here, a little bit under, still within that range, so I'm not worried. And if it goes lower, I'll continue to buy because I know at some stage we're going to come back and break this old all-time high. That I have absolutely no doubt of. I just can't tell you exactly when it is. All right, that's it for the chart analysis. Something very interesting, uh, and a lot of it's been going on Twitter. So, poly, uh, Aave on Polygon, so you can go over here. Rates have been slashed drastically. I think they stopped yesterday. I think it was the 17th of June or something like that. Excuse me, and so a lot of people are blowing up and they're saying, oh, it's not even worth, excuse me, being on Aave at the moment. This was 22% and I'm kicking myself. I missed it. I was literally going to start staking some Aave uh, on Aave on the Polygon uh, side of it uh, and it was like nearly 22% and guess what? It's gone, so I've missed it. So that's very, very interesting, but I have read on Twitter that uh, it sounds like they're going to uh, start it all up again. Now it's funny, people are complaining, oh, 5%, you know, die, but only 1.4%, uh, you know, worth of matic. It's not even worth it anymore. What bank are you going to where you're getting more? You're not. Are there going to be other, you know, similar platforms like Curve and that that'll possibly pay something more? Yep, but they're generally not going to be that much more. And if they are, it's a bit like a sort of a, a rotating cycle. You know, Curve will be paying more for a while, so you jump onto Curve, and then they might be, uh, you know, providing liquidity for something else as well, and then it'll be another one, it'll be Compound, and you can just follow them around. But the problem is that becomes a bit tiresome. I still think, you know, 1.78% uh, is not the worst amount. It's more than any bank's paying, but also you're still getting about a percent of uh, Matic. So, you know, you can constantly go and, you know, try and chase all these things. And, you know, the good thing is at the moment, the gas fees are really, really low. But the thing is, first, you've got to take this automatic, put it back onto uh, the Ethereum network. There's a gas fee for that. It also takes 13 hours. Uh, I think at the moment, if I, uh, my, from what I read is correct, then you've got to send it somewhere else and there's more gas fees. It just seems like a whole lot of work. Now, again, I'm not saying that, you know, this is a great rate. Again, BlockFi's uh, paying more last I looked. But again, why would you want to have all your money tied up uh, in any one place anyway? Why not just, you know, find the ones you like? So maybe Curve, maybe Compound, you know, Maker, uh, Anave, whatever, and just have your USDC die, you know, and all the rest of it spread across all three. So you don't have to constantly go chasing and chopping all around the place. You're never just going to have a solid, you know, 6% and it never changes. That's not the way it works. All of them chop and change. But at the moment, they are definitely low. But from what I have heard, or sorry, what I read on Twitter, I think they are getting ready to gear it up again and they're going to run it for another few months. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see and I'll keep you up to date with that. All right, get on to some news stories, some interesting ones. So again, El Salvador passed the Bitcoin laws. All right, after hinting at potential cryptocurrency legislation last week, a Paraguayan official has confirmed that the rule is coming in July. So it'll be interesting to see what the rule is though. Do they kind of outright copy what El Salvador's done or do they have uh, something similar but not quite exactly the same? I still think this is pretty bullish though. And again, the only time this is really going to slow down is if Bitcoin fully dumps. If it really kind of goes down hard, particularly goes below 20,000, I think you're going to see uh, not too many more countries follow suit. But in saying that, once it feels like it's maybe hit a bottom and starts to rise again, wait for these other countries to get on board. It will take a little while. That's the thing at the moment that's going to slow things down. 
is if we see a really big crash in the market that absolutely will slow things down you know as in other sovereign nations and things like that getting on board because they'll just be too scared they'll be like oh we need to you know wait for this you know correction over but i get the feeling like the correction's pretty close to over could be wrong not financial advice time will tell but good on you uh paraguay you know for taking a stance because you know we all know the dollar is certainly not the answer the you know the us dollar is the the world reserve currency and that's not looking too flash at the moment and in all fairness i'm not saying that there's another fiat currency uh that is looking much better either you know certainly not the australian dollar we got absolutely smashed by the us dollar uh not that long ago we dropped down to like 75 cents or something i mean i've seen it lower i've seen it down at 70 cents and 69 cents uh so you know the australian dollar is not the answer the pound's not the answer they still are all exactly the same thing they're a fiat based system controlled by a government and a central entity that can just print more when they want more that doesn't work for anyone all right bitcoin reserves on blockfi to new low as btc prices sluggish now the decreasing btc reserves on blockfi suggest that whales are not interested in hodling but is there more to the story all right i can tell you right now there is more to the story they're only paying uh i think it's five percent for I think less than half a Bitcoin. If you got over half a Bitcoin, uh, you're not getting uh, very much for it. So that's why people are taking it off. It's not so much that they're getting ready to dump it. It's just why have, you know, 10 BTC on there to earn, you know, very minuscule amount when you can just have half a Bitcoin on there and sort of earn 5%. So that has some to do with it. And likewise, you know, if you've got, you know, one Bitcoin, why would you leave it on there if you had one bitcoin in total you're one of the lucky people that could have a full bitcoin you'd just put half on there and you take the other half off uh, and just have it somewhere else and not risk it so i think that has a lot to do with it i don't think it's so much that people are getting ready to suddenly you know dump bitcoin uh, and a big market crash comes could happen but I can tell you, I, I don't have any problems if that's what happens because I'm just going to continue to buy and you won't get you know, me to sell my Bitcoin for really anything less than 100,000. 100,000 is where I start to, you know, and even then I may change my mind depending on you know, time, date, place and sort of all the rest of it. Maybe 100 grand is not enough, but I sure as hell am not selling any at less than that. All right, Ethereum upgrade. So EIP-1559, uh, the London hard fork and all that, seems like it's on its way. So Ethereum upgrade, which will reduce the ETH supply, moves into its final stages. All right, so the London hard fork should, and this is what we need to be careful of here, should be ready in July. It will hit the Robson test net next week. So Ethereum you know, has had a number of delays and things like that. So we'll have to wait and see. You know, there was already talk that Ethereum 2.0 could kind of roll out at the end of 2021. And now they've already said, no, that's unlikely now. It's going to be 2022. But in saying that, at other times they've said, no, things are going to happen quicker. So it's a bit of a game at the moment. But look, it's good that it is moving ahead. But, you know, hopefully this happens sooner rather than later. You know, it's good that we got the layer two solutions, but... I think this will be one of the catalysts to really send Bitcoin to the next level. Because at the moment, it's only good for institutions. Even though the fees are cheap right now, as soon as it picks up, it'll be institutions only that can use it because no one can afford those gas fees. Once they get to $20, $30, uh, it's pretty hard to stomach. But once you start paying hundreds of dollars, uh, it's just ridiculous. And that cuts everyone out. And that even included me. I just I couldn't afford it. I was hardly using any Ethereum platform for months and months due to the fees. Right, Goldman Sachs. So Digital Galaxy's co-president Damien Vanderwilt announced today that his firm has partnered with Goldman Sachs to help provide Bitcoin futures products. So they're telling, you know, how bearish things are, you know, in Bitcoin at the moment, yet they're making moves in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space. Seems laughable that they can put that kind of stuff out that bitcoin heavy correction and all the rest of it yet yet they're getting involved in futures products now it is futures products though uh, it's not exactly bitcoin but interesting nonetheless now the partnership marks one of the first occasions where an american multinational investment bank has partnered with a crypto asset service provider so again sometimes you need to look at what they're doing and not listen to what they're saying because they'll be saying one thing and doing completely the opposite 
Very, very interesting from Goldman and Sachs. All right. NASCAR driver Landon Castle to be paid in cryptocurrency for the remainder of this season. All right. I was thinking about that. That could be, you know, it, well, it's really going to go one or two ways, I suppose. If the market starts to pump, he's going to be doing extremely well. If the market just goes on a big, massive, you know, crash from here, then that's probably going to hurt him. But again, I'd say it's the remainder of the season, so he's probably a fair way through the season, uh, I would say. So he's probably got enough money to kind of get him through the next season, and he'll be waiting to see how he does. Now, he does have Voyager uh, on the side of his car there, and I remember seeing something that uh, he's teamed up with Voyager. So it'll be interesting to see what cryptocurrencies he wants to have his money put into. But, yeah particularly if crypto gets up on a run, which you know I think it will at some stage, I just don't know when it is, having his remainder of his uh, season paid out in crypto could pay off to be uh, quite beneficial. It'd be interesting to see where Russell uh, Okung is at the moment, and not like where he is, but how his portfolio, you know, how his wealth is kind of doing. Because I know he's been paid in it for a while, and I've got no doubt he's still up, but it'd be interesting for him to see, you know, nearly 50% of possibly his total wealth. I doubt it because I'm not. I'm going to say that he's been in long enough that he's probably still well and truly up, but no doubt he would have seen uh, a heavy hit. All right, Darksy Bank. So will not block credit card users in crypto trading according to its newly announced position on cryptocurrencies. The Danish bank will also accept deposits related to crypto investments, although it follows a cautious approach towards decentralized digital assets. This was a problem here in Australia that we had. So you couldn't use your credit cards uh, to buy any cryptocurrencies. And look, in all fairness, I don't recommend doing it because the fees kind of kill you. But also you couldn't uh, even you know, make uh, bank transfers and that for a while. Then they kind of eased up on that and they allowed it. But then the problem was you couldn't take any of the money you were making from your cryptocurrencies and put it back to your bank. They were like, no, no, you can't do that. At least here in Australia, from what I heard, things like that were happening overseas. But look, they've even eased up on that here in Australia. And I think this just goes to show that they are slowly but surely changing. Again, particularly last year, Nearly impossible to try and get money uh, on, you know, into crypto uh, through your bank. Very, very hard. Not impossible. There are a few ways to do it, but quite difficult. But again, then they even said, no, you couldn't bring that money back. They're like, no, we don't know where that's come from. These, uh, you know, it could be used for laundering. You know, all this kind of crap. It was just ridiculous, and it, you know, it really was completely farcical that they were doing with that. Wouldn't let you spend your money the way you wanted to, and then wouldn't let you bank your money with them either. Just, yeah, crazy. I know here in Australia we're not having those issues anymore. Uh, and it's good to see that even places overseas and some, you know, bigger, older banks are starting to, you know, very, very slowly come around. Bitcoin whales quietly accumulate 3,380,000. No, God, that's not right. What is that? 303 trillion? I don't know. I can't even read that. What is that? Uh, hundreds of thousands, millions. Yeah, is that right? Whales quietly accumulate. Is that, I don't know if that's three trillion. Maybe they've got that wrong or maybe I just can't read probably. Three trillion dollars in BTC in less than one month. Yeah, not sure about that. What I have no doubt is that they are uh, accumulating a ton of BTC. And a lot of people probably ask, well, why is the price not going up? It's all being done OTC. That's why. So what they do is buy at OTC and wait for the price to go sky high and they sell it on the open market uh, and then watch it crash and make, make a fortune. And again, they don't sell, well, yeah, they don't sell all of it. They just sell a portion of it, maybe, you know, 15%, 20%, 30%, something like that. Watch it crash and simply just buy back in again when the price is nice and low. And they just rinse and repeat uh, that over and over again. And that is how they end up, you know, becoming so big and the thing is you can do the same your buying power won't be the same but you can follow them buy when it's cheap buy when it's undervalued and then once it starts to go into price discovery i'm not saying you can't buy any more but just don't be buying as much and particularly you know when you maybe start to double triple your money and things like that 
yeah, take some profits, things to consider. Last but not least, this one was interesting. All right, legal expert says the SEC could target two additional altcoins, so not just going after XRP. I would say if they lose the battle to XRP, this won't happen. But I, yeah, we'll go down and have a look. So number one, USDC, USDT could find itself in the crosshairs of the SEC. And the likelihood of Tether being targeted by the SEC is 90%. I mean, hasn't someone already audited Tether and they basically couldn't, you know, it's not so much fault them, but couldn't find enough evidence to really prosecute them? I couldn't imagine the SEC is going to go after Tether, particularly if they lose the XRP uh, battle. I, I just couldn't see that happening. Now, also, Binance Coin is in danger. So the likelihood of Binance Cryptocurrency Exchange's utility token being targeted by the SEC is 85%. So it's 5% uh, less than the likelihood of them going after Tether. And again, I think both of these rest on what happens to Ripple. If Ripple succeed uh, and, you know, win their case, I don't see the SEC really going after any of these. I think, you know, Tether is a higher chance because the investigation before, you know, couldn't, you know, there wasn't enough evidence to really charge, but they didn't come out and say, yep, Tether is, you know, fully backed and all the rest of it. So that's why the SEC uh, would likely go after them if they wanted to go after someone, you know, to prove a point, and particularly if they had a bit of sour grapes from losing from Ripple and still wanted to, you know, fight that fight. I think Tether would be the likely one. Uh, but again, by the sounds of it, you know, from that last kind of look into Tether, they'd probably have a hard time. And if they lose to Ripple, uh, you know, they'd have to think really hard about, you know, how much money it would cost them to try and go after these guys. But if they were to win and get up against Ripple, fully expect Tether to be in the sights. And I think that 90% goes to 100%. And then I think Binance Coin uh, as well probably goes to nearly 99% if the SEC gets up with Ripple. All right, not a whole lot of news at the moment. Obviously, the weekend's here. And again, I'll just finish on this note. As long as we're kind of tra trading within this range, you know, and it can go a little bit lower and it can go a little bit higher, I'm not overly worried. I'm just, a, you know, I'm an investor. I just really buy and hold. I don't sell a whole lot. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, congratulations to you because you've outplayed the market. And I'll see you next time.